are the New York Knicks. I'm back. Rockin' the New York Blues. Well, it's the Knicks. Everybody, welcome to the New York Knicks podcast, episode 548, part of Dash Radio, uh, where the show is also brought to you by Ticket Club. You can go to our website, the New York Knicks podcast.com slash Ticket Club and use code NYKP for $20 off a premier membership. How are you doing, Mark? Good. How are you doing? Uh, I am doing good. I am. I would have been doing really, really good if we recorded this Sunday, but I'm still doing good. Okay, because I, I want to stop recording shows. <laughs> right. I, uh, I, I don't know if you've noticed the theme. I'm not saying I want to end the podcast. I just want to stop recording shows because the theme right now is the day before we record a show, the Knicks lose. They win every other game yep. just the day before we record. Yeah. Yeah, so we almost did a show when they had a nice 3-0 week. Couldn't do Sunday, and now we get to talk about a um, not good loss. Right. So basically, the Knicks, since the last show, they beat the Sixers. They beat the Bulls. They beat uh, the Pelicans. And they lost last night to the Raptors. They are 3-1, mm-hmm. which, in other, in other words, the week was a complete and utter disgrace, a disaster, if you would. <laughs> Based on just reading Twitter, um, Nick's like Reddit, uh, comment section of posting a toast, all other all different media, Nick's platforms, the sky is falling. The Knicks are not five and two; they're two and five. So here's how it is. Here's my positive take on this. Do you have a positive take on a three and one week? I. I I, I can't even see how you would. Come on. I mean, I went on Twitter. P- people need a, a little bit of a positive opener to this episode. How, I don't know how you have a positive opener three in one week. A three in one week, like how do you defend that? Fact? And, and and they beat uh, <laughs> they beat two playoff teams this week. Yeah, Philly and Philly and Chicago are playoff bound. So like, it's not like that. You know, it was a three in one week, and and they played Cleveland, Detroit, Orlando. You know, like. But Jay, they, they were teams. eliminated last night from the playoffs with the Raptors. That one loss, it's like over. <laughs> so they were. I thought they were going to win by thirty. That first quarter was ridiculous. We even got Mike Breen to Bing Bong, which was pretty funny. Yeah. So the uh, the Bing Bong thing, I think everyone can appreciate that. It's like a, I, I, it's fun that they have like a new a new thing that's happened. And like even the players, I think uh, I, one of the players retweeted uh, Bing Bong. Or, the like, the or, most surprising thing about Bing Bong is that I didn't have to explain it to you. I had to look it up. <laughs> I'm sure you I, did. I, I, I knew it was from the first game, the victory celebration. I was pretty sure, but I, I still had to look it up. Okay. So, okay. yeah. I had to look the, everything you know, up. I'm an idiot. They, <laughs> they just seem, the, the Knicks are very good this year, but they seem to get a little full of themselves when they get a big lead against a bad team and, and take their foot off the gas. And what, I mean, so it, in defense of the team, is there a chance that a team that changed two of their five starters, 40% of their starters, and which also amounted to major minutes for the game, is having a just figuring out how to gel and figuring out how to all play together? It's part that, and Toronto was hustling. I mean, the Knicks couldn't touch the ball without Toronto poking the ball out. and they, they we're, just, gonna, we're, gonna, we're going right to the loss, aren't we? It, I want to get it out of the way so we can focus on all the wins. I mean... Yeah, they 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 hustled. They they played really really hard, and that's so the, usually what the Knicks have been doing. The Knicks hit nine three pointers in the first quarter. It was goddamn ridiculous. It looked like one. Of the, I I felt like the last couple of games, the Knicks had, the games ended up closer than like the Knicks like wanted to blow the other team out and just didn't know how to step on their throat basically. Yeah. And the games just end up being closer. And I feel like the Knicks they hit a ton of threes in the first quarter. Julius Randle had like 18 points in the first quarter and they were like, Oh, this should be an easy game. And then they just kind of fell apart. They weren't basically there for the counterpunch. Right. Yeah. It, um, but the, the good news is this is 
this is a fixable issue. This isn't like, you know, they're getting blown out by 20. They just look overmatched. This is, this is more, I think, more of a mental issue, which is, I think, easily fixable. So I think they're going to be fine. I think they're going to be fine, too. I mean, the things, in my mind, so you mentioned the defense. I thought Toronto stepped up their defense majorly in the in like second probably quarter, in the yeah. second half. Yeah. Second quarter, really third quarter more than anything. They really started playing great defense, like crowding guy. Like there were so many, there were way too many turnovers, way too many. Like um Fournier kept getting like having trouble when they were getting they were playing tight on him. The Knicks also, by the way, you noticed have some trouble with the uh with zone defense, right? Yeah. Yeah. Also, I feel like they didn't match that defensive intensity until the fourth quarter, and by then you're trying to make up a twelve point deficit. Right. I also felt like, I mean, to Toronto's credit, I know people have said like the Knicks like played poor defense, but uh, I thought Toronto also was just making shots. Like, just sometimes you have to just like they were just good shot making. And there were a lot of open shots, but there were also a lot of shots where the Knicks contested, and Toronto just hit the shot anyway. Yeah, sometimes like, oh, uh, even the best defense sometimes is not good enough for the best offense. OG Ananobi, like, played awesome. Um, Trent hit some ridiculous shots. I just felt like I, I was like, I just felt like there was a barrage of, like, Toronto. And overall, Toronto only shot 33% from three. And the Knicks actually made more threes than Toronto. But I felt like I, the Knicks had most of their threes in the first quarter. I felt after that, Toronto just went on a spree of, like, we can't miss. Um and then they got all the offensive rebound. Like, they got all these second-chance opportunities. Yeah. There was a lot wrong with the game. Yeah. Brooklyn Adrian says, once they had the lead, the ISO Randall, and that kills us. That results in turnovers and a horrible shot selection. Randall gave us the lead, but let them come back. They need to keep moving the ball. Too much firepower to just ISO. Okay, so let's just start right here with Randall. i forgetting what is up. I think a big question everywhere in Nick's world right now is, What's the deal with Randall? What do you think? Why do you think Randall? First of all, what do you think of Randall's play so far? It is, it's been okay. It's been very, it's been very like inconsistent, I would say. Okay. And what do you, you know, it, the thing is, you, like you look at some of the games, you're like, oh, this guy isn't playing good at all. But then you look, he's, he's averaging. 21 11 and 6. Oh, okay. do you have all the stats up in front of you? Just Randall's. Okay, I was going to ask you if I see what, I was going to see close other stats if you have them in front of you. I want to okay. play a game with you later. Yeah. But uh I was going to ask you what you think his stats are. Did you look just now like what do you think he's shooting is? What do you think his three-point shooting percentage is? You know, somebody posted on Twitter so um I saw it. It's it's 37%, right? Yeah, it's fine. He shot 40% yeah. last year. It's also the beginning of the season and like things like it's we are acting like he's playing horribly when, as you just said, he has about 11 rebounds, six assists, 21 points a game. His shooting percentage is a little bit lower than last year. His numbers aren't terrible, but you'd agree, like, there's something off. Like, his offense isn't quite as good as it was. His defense intensity is not quite as good. He's holding the ball a little more. I feel like he's forcing it a little bit, and maybe he, he spent the last two years being the number one, two, and three option, and now – He's on the court with at least three other guys that can score the ball. And he doesn't need to do it all, but it, I think it's a habit he's going to slowly break throughout the season. So let's go through some of the theories of why he's not playing this well. Why, like, so I agree with you. Maybe, so you feel like part one, or maybe theory one, he's adjusting to the new guys he's playing with and trying to figure out what he needs to do and what he needs to let them do. Is that fair? Yeah, because when you think about it, after Barrett, who was the Knicks' next scoring option? It may, I mean, Rose, Burks, but like that's like guys coming off the bench. No, obviously this year, Fournier is a big... Fournier as, a, as maybe your third option slash second option is a huge upgrade. Kemba's a huge upgrade. They clearly added a lot more offensive firepower. Yeah. Um, theory number two with Randall. Um, hangover from the, the, from the Hawks series in the sense of like he's now like pushing himself extra hard because of what happened in the Hawks series and maybe pushing it a little too hard where he's trying to force stuff. Maybe he could be trying to prove himself and yeah, make up for the playoffs. It could be, it could be part mental as well. Yes. Theory number three, mm -hmm. he just had a baby. He had a second child mm -hmm. and second 
and babies, they don't sleep well. Babies can be difficult. Um, I'm sure he's a rich man. I'm sure he has a nanny. I'm sure he has all the care he wants. But he also can be, at the same time, be involved, be involved when he's home, when the, when the New Yorker's not on the road. He may be involved with his kid. would make some sense. Maybe the new baby is causing him to get a little less sleep. Very possible. Very possible. Um, and you don't know, like, I have kids. Some kids are really great at first, easy sleep, good sleepers. Some kids can be insanely difficult. It can be stressful. Maybe that is wearing on him. I mean, obviously, having a kid's great, but it also could be a tiring thing that could also make him a little off. Yeah. Um, any other theories about Randall? I, I think we, I think we covered the ma- the major ones. I think we'd be getting into conspiracy th- territory with with any more. <laughs> you don't, you don't think Julius Randall is going to? He's working with JFK Jr. Um, to help Donald Trump with the next election. Maybe he's been spending his, part- his evenings waiting in Dallas. I don't know. There's a, but at a total side note, there's a some conspiracy theory where JFK Jr. has been dead for 20 years is going to be Donald Trump's running mate. Um, and it was supposed to be announced in Texas, and JFK Jr. was going to appear from the dead apparently today. But if you believe QAnon, it may have happened. Who knows? Uh, anyway, anyway uh, Brooklyn Adrian so, writes Would you trade a whole season for RJ to become an all star this year, meaning no playoffs? So you know what? I was thinking about this team. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I know I, I want to go to the playoffs. Um, I, and I also feel like too. I also feel like I, I know he said like either or, but if RJ is going to play like an all star, we are going to the playoffs. There's no question in my mind. Like the team would have to really, everything else would have to be a complete disaster for RJ to get all star level, and the team does not make the playoffs. Yeah, I'd rather him play at an all star level, get snubbed, but make the playoffs. So the one thing I was thinking about this team, because they have a little more pressure this year. No one's no one's saying the Knicks are championship or bust. But they have some pressure, like because they performed well last year. You can't go from fourth seed to like the play-in game, no. Right. So because of that, I feel like you can you have a little less room to experiment. In some ways, not that I'm, I'm not tanking for another pick or anything, but I I would argue it would be nice if Knicks had a little less pressure this year, and so they can do a little more experimenting. Like you can experiment right now. One thing that annoys me a little bit is top in. Toppin had two games this year that looked awesome. And then he's trying to really find his way. I feel like the Knicks could run more plays for Toppin. They could run more plays for uh, for Mitchell Robinson. They could maybe play McBride and Grimes a little bit. They could do a little more experimenting if they didn't have the pressure to win. Yeah, you're not saying Toppin at the five, are you? Because they have Robinson, Noel, and Gibson, like, and Sims. Is it? Oh, do we do we have Noel? Because I I haven't seen him yet. He'll be back this uh, week. He'll be back. Okay. And Sims, by the way, I like Sims. I'd rather give any minute Sims has to Toppin at the five. I, I I honestly like. I don't think Sims at this point adds a ton to an NBA rotation. I think he will in the future. He's someone to develop. He should be in Westchester when Westchester starts. But I'd rather give that dynamic to small. Like last night when they played Sims, I was just like. Why don't you just give those minutes to top in? It's not like it's not like Toronto has to, like at least uh, the the Hort, the uh, Pelicans had Valanciunas. So you didn't really want top in going against Valanciunas, but like this game, Toronto's bigs aren't that like big. You mm-hmm. could have easily just given that to a. Uh, you could have given top in more run at the five. Yeah. I so can, I, I, I yeah, is that crazy? I, I think Toppin's defense hasn't been that bad so far. No, no, it's it's not been that bad. It, it's definitely situational, but yeah, when you play a small team like that, it makes sense, especially since Gibson tweaked his ankle. So, exactly, the minutes yes. were there. T- yeah, I also just think like it's something that I want to see Toppin get more minutes. Right now, he's averaging sixteen minutes a game. I feel like there's a Tibbs has had a very quick hook with Toppin this year, um, and I wish it was a little bit like wasn't quite as quick of a hook. It's tough. I mean. Randall only sits 15 minutes a game and I, I, they got I a would, bunch of centers. It's tough. So Randall's averaging 37 minutes a game. What if you just cut, maybe like give him an extra minute or two here. Like maybe Randall would play a little better if you give him a couple extra, like a couple less minutes. Um, Toppin gives you a different look. I, I think Toppin also you have to run plays for, and the Knicks aren't always good about looking for him and running plays for him. They got a lot of options. They, they 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 forgot to put Fournier in the entire fourth quarter yesterday. Like, 
it, I, they have a lot of options. They have a lot of options, and obviously they didn't forget as much as Tibbs. I think Tibbs likes Fournier. His Fournier's defense hasn't been so good, so he liked what he liked what Emmanuel quickly was doing. I, I, a lot of people were killing Tibbs over that move, and some like I think he had left Burks in a little long um, a couple games ago. I, I think we have to also say like. Tibbs can experiment with these lineups and see what he feels like. Let's not question every move Tibbs makes. I'm only questioning it because he's on my fantasy team. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I quick the be- the bench has been giving us not so such great effort. Like I did a one day fantasy league yesterday, and I had Kemba, yeah. and yeah. he got like three layups in the final minute in garbage time, and like I was happy with that, and I was like. You should do that for 48. <laughs> how many assists should be, speaking of point guards, how many assists should you be getting per 48 minutes for your point guards? Six, six to seven. I would argue probably eight or nine, really. Like the, the, the I mean, not, I mean, the, the full 48 minutes, I want to see a few more assists from, from Rose and Kemba. Kemba are averaging about six combined. I mean, Kemba I has a just, career average of like six. He's averaging what, three this season? Yeah, he's averaging three, but he's playing also a lot, like reduced minutes. Yeah, but not um, like not half the minutes. Kemba and Rose, and partly Randall's a little more playmaking. I want to see more playmaking out of Kemba. Rose hasn't been that good either. I know with like he's shooting, like he's shooting well from three, but Rose really hasn't been that good so far. No, the the thing is. The Knicks are five and two, and there's a lot of room for improvement. You you have a bunch of players. Burks, Quickly, and Rose have all been very underwhelming. Uh, Randall's yeah. been up and down, and and they're still five and two. So like, I feel like they could be a lot. Of, Barrett's been awesome. Barrett's taken the leap we were hoping he would take. But other than Barrett, like he's really the only one who's playing above our expectations right now. Okay. Also, in fairness for Barrett, just how you look at it, the Knicks have played seven games, right? The mm-hmm. first couple games, Barrett wasn't all that great. He was kind of mediocre the first couple games. Right, yeah. He's really been – he's been stupendous the last two games. Mm-hmm. But that's really like – like it, it, I love what Barrett's been doing the last two games, but let's not act like he's been doing this for seven straight games. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. But, um, it, uh, you know, deep, didn't he do that last season, the first four or five games he was – and then the rest of the season he was fine? It was – yeah, no, he was. People First like all, to freak his, out over like the smallest of sample sizes. Yeah. Um, Speaking of which, AJ, I dropped Patty Mills based on a very small sample size. <laughs> see if you can um, just. I'm just curious. See if you can guess the Knicks' top three three point shooters in terms of percentage. In terms of percentage. Yeah. I'm gonna and, see, s- and, and, and check a guess what the percentages are also. Okay. I'm gonna guess Barrett. Barrett's number one. Um, shooting? I'm going to say Barrett's number two. Okay, Barrett's number two. Yeah. Okay. At Who's number one? At 41%. Okay. You're not going to th- Okay. Um, I'll tell you after. Just Okay. <laughs> number two is... Number one is Kemba. I'm going to say okay. 42%. And number three is... Who else we got? I'm going to say Rose... At forty percent. Okay, so you said Kemba forty-two, Barrett forty-one, and Rose forty forty yeah. percent. Mm-hmm. Um, so almost. Um, so <laughs> Kemba is number one at fifty-six percent. Okay, that's that's good. Rose, that's good, right? It's, yeah, Rose is number two at fifty percent, and uh, actually Fournier is number three at forty-three percent. Barrett Barrett basically Barrett's at point four two nine, and Fournier is at point four three one. That, that's absurd. Yeah, but wait, wait. Forty is shooting over eight threes a game at forty three percent. Isn't league average like 37, 36, 37? Yeah, I mean, also, like the the, the crazy thing is also like on two pointers. What's a good two two point shooting percentage? I think it depends on the position, but let's but yeah, say... yes, yes, center. Say 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 a non a non center. What are you looking for them? Uh, what like forty seven, forty eight. You would say basically, ideally, they shoot fifty percent from two, yeah. right? Yeah. Ideally, do you know what that that equivalent is in three point shooting? 
isn't that like you got to take off a third, right? So isn't that like yeah? Uh, so basically, thirty. It's a third. It's a third. It's a third, basically. Like thirty. Basically, 32. hitting thirty, hitting thirty-three percent of your threes is the equivalent of hitting fifty percent of your twos. I mean, that's why threes have taken off, basically. Yeah. Like simple math. Yeah. Because everyone, if you shoot, if you shoot above thirty-three percent, it's better than shooting fifty percent from two. Right. Um. But I, no, and. It's just, it's crazy. It's the shooting percentage the Knicks have currently are crazy. That stuff's going to come back, back down to earth. Um, but I, this team has a lot of goddamn shooting. Uh, so what, what's, how do we fix all the problems? What, what are the fixes here? I mean, I, I think there's, there's not too many other than I would say th- there's three things. All right. So you have ball movement. Yes. So more movement, more action out of the point guards. More, more action from the point guards. More, more movement from everybody because there's a lot of times where a guy has the ball and he looks like he wants to pass, but everyone else is kind of just standing there. So like, more movement everywhere on the court. Okay. Yes. Um, that will lead to more passes, more cuts, uh, more open layups or open threes. Um, number two, defense, which has been really good in spurts but it seems like they ease up and and let teams back into the game or um you know aren't able to pull away because of it so uh keeping that defensive intensity okay that would be huge yeah and uh, i i think the third is just is just mental like don't don't assume the second one wasn't that wasn't the second one defensive intensity mental um no that's more effort i think Okay. I, I think mental is more like I feel like they go into games now just assuming they're going to win and they get cocky and as soon as they get up like 10, 12 points they're like, oh yeah, we're so much better and then uh, yeah, it leads to less defensive intensity but I think it also leads to like let's take turns isoing and playing hero ball and like you know, the, the whole thing kind of unravels like they have a game plan and I feel like once they get cocky it, it unravels Okay, so while it would be cool to be the 73 win Warriors, would it be in some way to say like a game like last night is a good check, basically? A good basically like, um, hey, we're not this good. Like like losing some sometimes losing these games might benefit bit of benefits in the long run. It might. I feel like they, they took the Orlando game to heart and then they, they beat a, a very good Sixers and and Chicago team. Like, you know, maybe now they come back. They have a better competition this week. Maybe what would have been a two and two week is a three and one week now. So I feel like also the progress the Knicks have been making is if you go back at some point, they were not this season, but previous, you first start off basically playing hard enough to make fake comebacks. Mm-hmm. The Knicks have been making fake comebacks for a decade, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but at some point, like the comebacks seem a little more legit and you get a couple wins. Then you move on to playing a little tighter and, and having more of these close games come out on top and you're beating the, and you start beating the bad teams Mm -hmm. and you play closer with the the good teams, but you lose them. Mm -hmm. The Knicks are making the next step where now they should always beat the bad teams. The teams that are around there, like the the middle of the pack teams, the Knicks generally, when they play them, they should be up most of the game and only lose when they, that team comes back. Yeah. They like, they fall for the comebacks. But the Knicks are kind of taking that, I think, that next step, mm-hmm. which is a hard step to make, basically. Be the team where like we're not we're no longer winning games because we're out because it's unexpected. It's now expected and we have to live up the expectations. Yeah, I mean that Philly game, they completely took him beat out of the game. He looked frustrated. Yeah. He had uh what almost a career low for uh, he he had got a couple buckets near the end, but like he couldn't do anything all game and he looked really upset. That was a huge game. That was. Um, that was. So you want to you want to play you want to play around with some, some some stats here? Yeah, sure. Okay. So uh, first stat I want to ask you is where do you think the Knicks finished last season in pace of play? Pace of play. So of the, of the thirty of the thirty teams, where do you yeah. think they finished? You don't have to you don't have to guess the number. I'll, I'll tell you the number. Well, let's see. I, they had. Uh, they had Alfred running the point. Almost, a, I'm gonna say it was bad. I'm gonna say like 26th. The Knicks were 30th 
second pace of play last season. Okay. Um, at 98.2, I guess that's per shots per hundred. Okay. Um, where do you think, I guess they can't be lower than last season, uh, but where do you think they are this season? We're like, uh, so now they've got Kemba, they've got Fournier, more athletic team. Where are they in pace of play? I'm going to say top half, uh, 12. 20, tied for 20 seconds. Oh, okay. Um, and actually, that, yeah, there's worse, a lot of ISO still. Yeah. Their pace of play is actually slower than last season when they were worse in the NBA. Wow. Okay. 93.6. So there's room for so improvement. There is room for improvement on pace of play. I'm not sure what the deal there is, but uh, there is a lot of room for, for improvement. You know there. who plays with a lot of pace? Obi. Okay. Somebody grabs yes. a rebound, and that guy is under the opposing basket like two seconds later. That is absolutely true. Um, so another interesting one I thought. Um, this one I thought pretty interesting. So a big thing last year people made out was the Knicks. What were the Knicks on defense? What was one of the things the Knicks were really good at? Um, they were really good at uh, defending the three-point shot. Yes, that's where I'm going, Jay. Okay. Where did they finish in the league as opponents field three-point percentage? Where were the Knicks last year of the 30 teams? Uh, it was like three, right? Number one. They number were one. number okay. one in the NBA last year. Um, do you want to guess the percentage? What the, the opponent's three point percentage? 30, 32. 33.7% was the best in the NBA last year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this year, so basically, one of the things everyone said was what did the people say about this? They said that it was because a lot of the teams were shooting, they were missing shots even if they weren't contested. Right, and this would be something, but people, the Knicks did it for 72 games, so there's got to be something there, right? Their strategy? Yeah, it's too big of a, a coincidence for teams to shoot below average for 72 straight games. Like, they had to have been doing something. Okay, so of the 30 teams, it's only seven games. Where are the Knicks now? 18. You think they've been, like, they've been allowing a lot of threes? I think they have, yeah. Okay. They're 13. Okay, that was close. Uh, um, what percentage do you think they're shooting? They're allowing now. 36.5. 33.7, the same percentage as last season. Oh, wow. Okay. So last season, what led the NBA is now 13. I, I'm guessing some, some uh, rocky starts to the season. Yeah, I mean, this is all like, this will all even out basically. Currently, the Jazz are allowing 24.9% from three. I don't think the Jazz are have some amazing three-point defense they figured out that's 10% better than anyone else did in the NBA last year. I think guys are just missing against the Jazz. Yeah, that's the thing. With seven games, one team misses a bunch of shots. It brings your percentage down like 10%. So, it's... Yeah. I think the Knicks' general strategy last year was to some guys they tried to cover, some guys that just said – let him shoot. Um, and also they would try to like jump out on guys, but they, they basically kind of like said, if you get certain, if, if you, as long as you try to like cover certain guys, the team is usually going to miss more shots than they take. Yeah. Um, or obviously miss more shots, but they, the percentages aren't, Tibbs had a method mythology than this. It wasn't just like leave guys open and pray. I mean, um, it's better than the last 10 years where it was, it seemed like everybody hit three point shots against them. Yes, it was definitely better than that. It was, I mean, under like Fisdale, it seemed like they thought the three point line was the out of bounds line and they weren't allowed to pass it. Um, yeah, it did look like that. Um, where do you think the Knicks were last year in assists? Mm, I'm gonna say, pretty and this, low. Is, this is on offense, this is offense basically, not, not the defense. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think Randall led the team. Yeah. And it was a pretty big drop off from him. I'm going to say they were like 22 last year. Huh. The Knicks were 27th in assists last year. Okay. 
Yeah. That's pretty goddamn awful, right? It's really bad. Yeah, it's really bad. Okay. Under over this year. Are they higher or lower? They are higher. Where, where are they? I think they're 10th. 15th. Okay. At 17.1. Um, they are actually and the they're actually only averaging one more assist a game than they did last season. Interesting. Uh, there's that's not good. They should be getting 20. Yeah. Though so actually, uh, if you have 20 this year, do you know where you'd be ranked? One. Yes, Golden State, the only team with 20. <laughs> they should do it. They should do it. They should do it though. They should they they should get it up a little bit. Yeah. Um where else are they struggling? Where what else would you want to hear about? How are they doing on rebounds? Rebounds. Um, how about you want to hear about the, their opponents rebounding? Sure. The opponents' offensive rebounding. So I'm looking at this is we look at last year first. Um, where do you think the Knicks were opponents' offensive rebounding last year? Seventeenth. Um, they were tenth. So okay. they were pretty good at that. Yeah, yeah pretty good. Uh, pretty good, like a top third. Mm-hmm. Where do you think they are this season? I think they are around the same, 10th. 19th. Oh, bad. <laughs> no, not good, not good. Maybe no one um, will that. You know what's interesting? It's about the same number. <laughs> uh, yeah, all these numbers are thrown way off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So another one I thought was interesting. Um, let me find it real quick. Uh, opponents' points per game. Where did the Knicks last year rank in opponents' points per game? They were eighth. Eighth. So you think they were the eighth best team as far as uh... Knicks last year? Their defense was stellar. They were number one in the NBA in points allowed at 104 points a game. Okay. All right. Um, so where are they this season? Mm. Last year, they were number one. Mm-hmm. Where mm-hmm. are they this season? Four. You think four? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Okay. And do you think it's higher or lower than last year's 104? I think it's lower. Really? Did you, you, did you watch the Celtics game when there was like 175 million to 174 yeah. million? <laughs> Good point. Uh, the Knicks are 20th. 20th. At 110. Yeah, it's, it's because of that game. Yeah. A little inflated, obviously. Yeah. Um, overall, the Knicks defense does not look as good so far. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really the big takeaway here. I mean, game. it's to be expected. I mean, they had a downgrade in defense for both of their backcourt players. But offense should be uh, way up. Um, opponent's field goal percentage. Mm. Where do you think it was last year? I think it was fifth. First, best in the NBA. Okay. Where's this year? 18th. Fifth. These stats make no sense. How are they like? <laughs> okay. You know what? Does it, you know what makes the least amount of sense? Mm-hmm. Last year, the Knicks were number one in the NBA at forty-four percent opponents' field goal percentage. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good, right? Yeah. This year, the Knicks are at fifth at forty-two percent. They're actually having a lower field goal percentage against them, but they're now fifth. We may have to revisit this like forty games into the season. And see yeah, if it makes more stats, sense. Yeah. The stats are all for the because the Heat right now are allowing thirty-nine percent. May I? Maybe the Heat defense is just, oh, my God, so much better than last year. Or maybe they played like a bunch of teams that just can't shoot. Yeah. I think everything, everything's pretty skewed this year. Um, <laughs> Bless you. <sighs> Got to do something for the show. <laughs> um, do you want to – is there any offensive stats you want to you look at? How um, are the Knicks – you want to know how the Knicks are shooting? Sure. Okay. So last year – Three point percentage. How did the Knicks shoot three point percentage? Didn't we just do this? 
how, how are the Knicks shooting on offense? Last year they were, uh, they were good, right? Yeah, they were, they were like top five, fifth. They were third in Lambay with at thirty nine percent. Here's an interesting one: three pointers attempted. How? Where were the Knicks on three pointers attempted a game? They were really bad, right? Like twenty eighth. Yeah, twenty seventh at thirty threes a game. Let me ask you, Jay. Where are the Knicks this season? On three-point percentage, where do you think they are? Well, based on the numbers you gave me earlier, I'm going to say first. Uh, second. Second. They're doing better than last year. Charlotte Hornets just are beating them. The The Knicks are 40% and Hornets are 41%. Knicks are almost 41%. What, do they have one guy shooting like 0%? You named four guys are shooting like 50%. Like, how are they yeah, only averaging well, 40? Well, oh, who's not shooting well from three? Alec Burks, uh, Emmanuel, actually, uh, never mind. Burks actually, what do you think Burks is shooting? Because he's been bad, right? Yeah, like, I don't know, 33? 42%. So is it all just quickly dragging the entire team down? Toppin and quickly can't shoot threes. <laughs> Quickly's 21%, Toppin's 15%. Oof. Hey, I don't know. Um, but, uh, I mean, 40% is still pretty darn good, basically, overall. Yeah, no, it's just uh, funny because you have, like, five guys shooting way way over but the team is then, barely average bigger point though where are the knicks on three points are just tempted third they're eighth but the bigger point here they're shooting 40 40 threes a game they're shooting an entire 10 10 more threes a game that's pretty crazy that's a pretty big adjustment yeah um t- timberwolves are at 43 a game um actually why i love the timberwolves the timberwolves are shooting 40 43 threes a game at a percentage of? I think it's really bad. It's 34%. 31.6%. Oh, that's terrible. I mean, if you're a Knicks and you're like really good shooting, maybe we could add some more shots. You got Tim Wolves. I don't know. You have Towns. Work the ball inside, jerks. So I had a rule during the fantasy draft that I would not take any Timberwolf because every single year for like the last 10 years I get screwed by a Timberwolf I forgot and I picked up Beverly yesterday and right before the game inexplicably is out of the game with a mysterious injury so I just dropped him Uh, he didn't even play a game for my fantasy team because I I realized like anytime I pick a Timberwolf it's just I didn't even realize I I like Beverly I, I, I didn't even realize he was on the Timberwolves yeah, so can't do it. I picked up Monte Morris instead. Um, any other anything else you want to know about the Knicks? Uh, no. Let's move on from stats. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought those were some interesting stats. I mean, the stats are obviously skewed. They'll be a little more interesting. Uh, it'll be interesting to revisit this maybe at the twenty game point. So Noel is has been upgraded to questionable for tomorrow's game against the Pacers. Okay. Um, well, that's good. How did, how did, it's good. It's how things, so when when Noel is healthy, which will probably be very soon, we 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 um what happens? Well, uh, well, the, I think Gibson loses most of his minutes, but Gibson's been playing really, really well. But I think you have two borderline elite defensive players. To, yeah. to play defense for 48 minutes a game now and I I, I think it's I think it's gonna make a big difference I, I really do um oh I wanted to add just a couple more stats for you. you don't have to really guess but opponents points off turnovers the Knicks are it's only fifth in that so they're actually doing not a bad job opponents opponents points off of fast breaks the Knicks are actually doing a pretty good job off as well and uh they're second in and Opponents points in the paint. The Knicks are fourth in. So while, I mean, overall the Knicks are clearly winning games for a reason. The Knicks actually, some of these stats they're look actually looking pretty good at. I'm actually like kind of surprised because I, I would have thought that yesterday's game would have dragged them to like twentieth. I felt like Toronto got eighty points off of turnovers and fast breaks. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that that I'm sure all that stuff didn't help, but uh, that's what it felt like anyway. Yeah, so we, I agree with you. Um, Gibson is more of he is the third string. He is the third string center. You'll use him some, but you'd also 
you can play Noel and Mitch the whole time and be perfectly happy. And I'm sure Gibson is like, one of these guys will be injured like any 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 moment now, I'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna get run. He he might have a stretch of 10, 15 games where he gets some DNPs or plays like five minutes, but between the I two mean, of them, like one of them is probably gonna be out like a third of the season. So if Gibson goes ten games with DNPs, I will be ecstatic because that will mean ten games where Noel and Mitch were healthy and able to stay on the floor. Yeah, exactly. That 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 would be pretty awesome. Um what else are we looking for? So what do we think of? What do we make of RJ? What do you think of, like, is this, are, is he suddenly stepping up to being an all-star? What, what, are we, what are we expecting? I think he's taken another mini leap. I, I do. He's, he's improved every season. I don't see why he shouldn't continue this trend. I'm not expecting the last two games to be what he has all season. I'm sure he's going to, he may stink next game, but I think he's going to have more of these good games and it's just going to continue like a, a normal upward trajectory. This is, this is what a developing player is supposed to do. I mean, we, we just never really see this, but yes, this is, yes, this is exactly what a developing player is supposed to do. There's a reason the Knicks I, took him third and I'm glad they had the third pick because if they so, had the first pick, we would be watching Zion in a suit gain 50 pounds, not of muscle. <laughs> and can you imagine the media? There's not been that much media coverage on this. If Zion was on the Knicks, it would be like diet watch, like every single day. I, I, people, yes, it would. The media it would be nonstop coverage of how much of a disaster this pick is. They would already be, be already be like, they'd be already calling him Zion Greg Oden. Like, actually, actually, no, it would be uh, Eddie Curry. They'd be comparing him to Eddie Curry more than anything. Yeah, yeah. Um. The, so, what I've observed from uh, RJ's game, his early in the season, I know the season's not very long. First couple of games, I felt like his finishing at the basket wasn't that great. And I was kind of a little frustrated because I was like, ah, this part of RJ's game still kind of sucks. In the last two games, especially, he has been goddamn awesome at getting to the rim and finishing. Yeah. Yeah. With authority, like, I was like last night, I don't know. I don't need RJ to shoot the ball 30 times, but I was like, I don't know. Maybe RJ could take the ball to the rim 30 times in this game. It might work out. Yeah, it's it's nice to see players like Randall and RJ, and you're like, oh, there's this hole in this game, and then they they work on it and actually improve it and fix it rather than, oh, that's just his Achilles heel for the rest of his career which we've had players like that in the past. I mean, so his last three games really have been really great. Um, mm-hmm. He's been getting, he's getting to the rim. His shooting, his shooting touch from three, by the last two games, he was five for eight and six for eight. This is a guy who basically in his, during his rookie year, people said he can't shoot. He has no three point shot. How can he even exist in this league? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, he looks so comfortable from three. I'm sure he'll be inconsistent going forward. Not, not as consistent as we'd like, but uh, the last two games have been absurd, especially. Holy crap. So Nomad asks, based on the playoff teams, did the Knicks have the weakest defensive backcourt? Kemba and Fournier couldn't guard anyone against the Raptors. Yeah, they do. What do you do about this? You have a really good defensive front court. That's the only way you make up for it. I mean... It's not like Atlanta has a powerhouse defensive backcourt. No, I mean Trey is not a good defender. Um, yeah, I, I do you give. So here's a question: Miles McBride is supposed to be a really good defender. Do you give him some run with the makeup for it? But then, then you have to take Kemba or Rose off the floor if you want to do that. Yeah, the thing is, th- their defense, their offense is. You know, when their offense is cooking, it makes up for the defense. If they're off, you know, if they're having an off night, maybe then you you pull them a little earlier and and put in somebody like McBride. But you know, Kemba was hitting every shot yesterday. That you, you can't take him out when he's doing that. Um, you thinking are you, yesterday Kemba was hitting every shot? You're thinking of a different game. Well, maybe I was thinking of the f- actually no. He went three for six from three. He, he, I, but I think lot, he was three for three in the first quarter. I think. 
Yeah. And Kemba, by the way, since our last show has been like, we said last show was like, what's wrong with Kemba? And then after that, he was like, no, I can shoot. I'm pretty, I'm pretty darn good at shooting. Right. Um, I think he's become a bit of a spot up shooter. Like he doesn't do as much beyond shoot. He's been a great shooter. I want to say a little more out of Kemba. Yeah. I mean, we touched on it before more, definitely more distributing. Uh, but uh, so what do you do about the defense? Yeah. I agree with you also with like, that's why you have centers who like really great rim protectors. And is it, do you think Fournier and nothing against um, Bullock, but do you think Fournier and Bullock are even close as overall NBA players? No, I think Fournier is way, way better. Yeah. I mean, whatever, however better Bullock is on defense than Fournier, it's not, he's not that much better than Fournier on defense. And the offense is like a, just a whole other level player. Right. They're shooting similar three point percentage, but Bullock was just a, spot up three point shooter. Fournier can drive, he can he can handle the ball, he can set up plays like he, he's just way more multifaceted on offense. Yeah. Fournier can he can he can create his own shot. Bullock could not create his own shot. It's just a yeah. different like nothing no respect disrespect for for Bullock. Fournier is an above average starter. Bullock is a role player. Bullock was a very pleasant surprise last season. Yes. And and you know it was it was great having him. Uh, but if you're like having remorse, just look at his box scores in Dallas. Yeah, they're nothing special. I so I, I think the biggest thing that I would like to see to happen this week is uh, I want to see the bench start contributing a little more. I want to see bigger games. I love when Toppin plays more and has big games. I'd like to see more from Toppin, and I'd like to see more from IQ this week. Ed Burks, those three guys, really. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Those if those guys. Uh, are, are cooking as well, then the, the Knicks are going to start maintaining those 15, 20 point leads and bringing that to the end of the game. I remember beginning of last season, Burks kind of like, I think none of us were that like, oh, we got Alex Burks. None of us were like, oh, great, we got Alex Burks. And then he had a couple games early on where he just like lit it up like 20 points and 20 points again and 20 points again. Mm-hmm. Burks can get hot. He hasn't done that really yet this season. I want to see more from him on the second unit getting hot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if if those guys start heating up, then the, the Knicks really they don't they won't be letting up on offense the entire game, and it's going to tire teams out. And really, you know, uh, other teams have a big drop off when they put in their bench, and if those guys heat up, the Knicks don't have that drop off, and that'll be the difference. Yeah, I actually also last night the uh, the Knicks the Knicks fell apart with the with their starters on the floor. Like the Knicks, like the second unit, like was playing pretty well. And the first, the stars went back in and then the whole thing fell apart. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't great. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I, I agree with you. The strength, one of the strengths of this team is the fact that like when they go to the second unit, the second unit is better than most teams' second units. Yeah. Um, so what do you think? The week, the week ahead, who do we got, Jay? We have coming up before the next show. Um, next, next week is a Sunday and a Monday, probably another Tuesday show because of us. Uh, so we have four games before next Tuesday. Uh, we have Indiana, Milwaukee, Cleveland, and Philadelphia. What do you think there, Jay? I think it should be a three in one week. Okay. Indiana, you say a win. I assume, I, I'm right? going to be very upset if they don't beat, what are, it was Indiana, one and six, two and six. like Something like that, yeah. Milwaukee, who's been playing a little bit underwhelming so far. They just won by today by uh, 27. I guess they're not that underwhelming today. Cleveland, which is much improved from last year. Yeah, what that should still be a win. And Philly, you beat them a lot by a lot last time. You think you're going to win by a lot the second time? And this no, they're, they're, they're going to be mad. They're going to be looking for revenge, but it, it's still a winnable game. Okay. I would be, I'm not upset if this is a two and two week. This should definitely not be a one and three week. Two and two, three and one would be fine. They're not going four and oh, but they do. That would be un- un- incredible, but it's probably not going to happen. Yeah, sounds about right. Um, anything else for tonight? Oh, I think I think we're about out of time, so uh, that's good. Uh, check us out, NY Knicks Podcast. I'd like to thank uh, Chris for upping his Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash NY Knicks Podcast. We're also NY Knicks Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And... Oh, by the way, here's here's what's going to happen, actually. Yep. The Knicks are going to crush Indiana, crush Milwaukee, crush Cleveland, and then lose a squeaker to Philly, 
And on the next show, it'll be the saddest show we have where, we're, where the Knicks fans just want to rebuild. Just keep the trend of losing right before we record. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I, like, I, like right before, before everything's great. We lose right before the show. And Knicks fans are always like the sky is falling. <laughs> Sounds about right. Oh, Larry, I, how we can't do it if we. Yeah, it's going to be. Uh, yeah. And who is going to be our player of the week? The unexpected player of the week last this past week, the unexpected player of the week. Or unexpected. The guy, Kemba was the guy who stepped it up between last show and this show. Yeah. Who's going to step it up? Who pick pick a guy who's going to be stepping up between la- this show and next show? Who will be the surprise? I Not think surprise, but you know what I, you know what I mean. It's it's got to be Burks or quickly, right? Like they've been like really really underwhelming this season. They're they're really he, due. He, he, right. Maybe the week of quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Quickly having some nights where he goes off. I, I, I can see that happening very soon. He's been very underwhelming. Maybe he's ready to start shining again. Yeah. Okay. So uh, thank you, Brooklyn Adrian. Thank you, Nomad, for joining in the chat. Uh, if you want to join us when we go live, you can go to twitch.tv slash crumpled bacon and hit that follow button. You'll get a notification when we go live. And we put all our shows on YouTube afterwards. And our YouTube channel is T-I-T-O-W-A-J. And, yeah, we'll be back next Tuesday, hopefully talking about a 4-0 week. Jay, actually, one question before we go. If uh, my son currently has an R- uh, has a uh, R.J. Barrett jersey, yep. Uh, for Hanukkah, he wants another uh, Knicks jersey. Mm-hmm. What player would you get him? I've already decided. I already have the answer on my end. But who would you get? Who is the next jersey? He has – well. Previously, he had KP, which did not go well. Right. Now here's R.J. Barrett. Barrett is awesome. He wants a second jersey. You obviously don't get him a second Barrett. So uh, who do you get him? I'd probably get him Randall, but you're going to get him Toppin. I got him Randall. Okay. But I I, I thought about Toppin. Um, I need to see a little more from Toppin. He's going to get it in my, in my son's closet. But, uh, yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, maybe next season. We're... He's still got a couple next, years on the team. Yeah, yeah. Randall this year, next year could be topping. Charlie Ward <laughs> curse isn't due to hit for another two years anyway. Yeah. Well, um, wait, when's Barrett a free agent? I think the Knicks have to extend him after next season. Yeah, rookie contracts are four years, so they could sign him to an extension next season. Okay. He's he RJ I think is gonna be extended. He will break the streak. Yeah, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say Knox is not gonna break the streak. <laughs> By the way, you know what I love? Uh, and I, you'll end in one second. I love the fact that uh, I see online, uh, like people are complaining about things, and there's a, just a, a just a bunch of conferencing on Twitter and different message boards where people are like, oh, "Man, we would have won last night if if, if Tibbs were just putting Grimes and uh, McBride. Nick's gonna pulled it out." I'm like, "Yeah, I, I like those rookies a lot, also." But you know the guy. I don't think the guys who've never played in the NBA are the difference between winning and losing uh, this early in the season. This guy has 11 minutes of NBA experience. He would have been the difference against a veteran NBA team. I mean, it's just the, it basically the Frank stands who are like, who else should we jump on? Basically, be like, this guy who's not playing is the difference. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It, settle down, people. Go look at Frank's uh, box scores. <laughs> okay. I think we're out. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks again for joining, and we will be back next Tuesday. Go Knicks. I mean, I, I, I messaged you this, but uh, your costume of Halloween, that was awesome. Oh, thank you. You did a pretty good job. I was I was like, God damn it. I would almost, I would, obviously it's not, it's not original original, but I was like, oh man, like I should have done Beetlejuice. That would have been awesome. I, I did my own makeup for it. Did you do your own makeup for it? I did, yeah. Nice. How did you, did you buy like a, obviously you bought the jacket. Did you buy like a kit for that or? 
I I bought the jacket and uh, like the um the jacket and pants came in one thing and then I found a wig uh, that I think was supposed to be based off Beetlejuice just anyway but it didn't come with the the suit um and then I bought a makeup pack I I think they I think these costume places are scamming cuz it seemed like it was a Beetlejuice makeup kit as well so it seems like they just <laughs> took the costume and just spread it out throughout the store to make me spend triple on the costume <laughs> How much did you spend on the costume? I think the co- I think the suit was like sixty, and I probably spent another fifteen on the on the wig, and another ten fifteen on the makeup. I probably spent almost hundred bucks. Okay, I mean it was it was pretty darn good. How was the Halloween party? Did they uh, did people? Well, first of all, did people be like, "Oh, that's awesome," or people like, "Who are you supposed to be?" Uh, I think like. Four or five people got it, which I it was just about three or four more than I was expecting. Uh, I was because it, it was all my girlfriend's friends, and I'm like, none of them are gonna know. And uh, a couple of them, even one one of the ten year olds walked up to me and said Beetlejuice, and I was like, holy shit! So I don't cool. think anyone around our age would get that. I, I everyone around our age should. Um, I, I went to work and I showed these two girls I work with who are like twenty three, and they're like. Yeah, I've never seen or heard of that movie. I was like, I'm so old. I thought it was so. I, I thought it was an awesome costume. Thank I didn't you. see that many like really good costumes. Like, uh, I mean, I didn't go to a Halloween party. We just went around uh, trick or treating our neighborhood. Like, I didn't see any. Ama- I didn't see that many amazing costumes. But uh, yours was the best costume I saw. Oh wow! Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I also didn't see any. Like, I just saw like very like pretty traditional costumes here. I lost so many costumes in the movie. I had a, a Raiden costume from Mortal Kombat. Uh, that that one did anyone did anyone get that one? Not a lot, but the people who did got super excited because like, if you're a hardcore Mortal Kombat fan, that's you know. Yeah, no, I get that. I'm just saying it's like not. I feel like Be- I feel like Beetlejuice is so much more recognizable. Yeah, I, I get I get a lot with Space Ghost too, but a lot of people would say Batman, and I'm like, when have you ever seen Batman in all white, like? I think uh, I think I remember you got. I think I remember you. Uh, you came to one of uh, Liz's friends' Halloween parties. You were Space Ghost. Like early on, when I was first knew you. Yeah, you guys came to one of my Halloween parties. I think you came to one of Liz's friends' Halloween parties. You asked what we were doing, and I told we were going to one of her friends, and you got and you came and you came as Space Ghost. Yes, you, I, you, I think you I remember, remember that. I, I don't think we stayed long. I think I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't. I. I I don't really even remember it because I remember, I remember the Space Ghost costume. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, oh, that's a, again another costume. I was like, oh, that's a good costume. I'm almost positive on the way to that I met another Space Ghost, and we took a picture together. That beats. Uh, I once went to. A, I, I dressed up as just like a prisoner, um, and, and Liz was like a police officer. Some guy at, like, at the bar was like, oh my god, I'm also a prisoner, and my girlfriend, she's a police officer. We got to take a picture together. I'm like. These are the most generic costumes we could have bought. You really think this is like an amazing coincidence? <laughs> right. I um, one year uh, it was like a while ago. I, I was I was Beetlejuice, and I ran into this couple that was. You remember that scene in Beetlejuice where the the couple was like distorting their face to try and scare the the new family out? Yeah, and yeah. They they recreated those faces, and I ran into them. Oh, when I was Beetlejuice. Wow. It was amazing. That's a that's a pretty creative one. Yeah, yeah. We I watched Beetlejuice over I think it was over the summer. Sometime during the pandemic, I showed Beetlejuice to my kids. They didn't really like it that much. Really? Yeah. I don't know. It, it's the movie's pretty slow. It's not as it. interesting. If you rewatch it with kids, you can be like, "This is a little bit slower than uh than what they're used to." Kids got spoiled they're like. If it's not like non, not nonstop now, they like check out immediately. But even that, like, there's like things are just slower, and the movies like just are just have a lot of slower scenes. I don't know, like, like, like I told you that like Karate Kid, you don't remember the first scene of Karate Kid? It's just them getting in a car and driving. Yeah. Nothing happens. Like movies just to start with nothing going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, Beetlejuice was surprisingly slow. I mean, I I like Beetlejuice, but I'm like, oh. I like it, but this movie's a little slower than I than I than I remember. Yeah, check this. Even out. Ha, ha, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. My kids were watching, being like, "When the hell do they get small?" I'm like, "I don't know if it even happens in this movie." 
there's there's my on the way to that party where I met the other Space Ghost. I'm sharing the oh, screen. Wait, you me. Oh, you're sorry. I was looking at your screen. Oh, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> That is funny though. You uh, you ran into a space ghost. It's not the most common costume. Yeah. Yeah. That that's why we were so excited. We're like, holy shit, another space ghost. Yeah. Versus, holy shit, another prisoner. Wow, that's crazy. Even orange jumpsuit also. <laughs> I was trying to see if I could find the uh, the one with the people from Beetlejuice. I can't find it though. Oh, uh, that's that's a pretty good. That's a pretty creative costume. Yeah. The, uh, I was at a Halloween party a couple of years ago. Our town is Port Washington, and the uh, I forget which one. One of the couple, one of them was Port Wine, the other one was George Washington. So Port Washington. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, I thought it was clever. I was like the guy. I remember like we were the cast. They were like, we were like, you're you're Port Wine. He's like, oh no, she was like Port Wine. She's like, wait, you have to find my husband. You'll, it'll make sense when you see the two of us together. <laughs> Anthony's asking us about Randall. He wants us to redo our contents just for him. Unbelievable. What does he want to? What, so what, what does he want to know about Kyle, Randall? How do we feel about him so far this season? I feel he's a little underwhelming, um, but uh, it's a small sample size, and I think he'll be fine. There's a lot of okay. uh, there's a lot of new players to adjust to, and uh, you know, he doesn't he doesn't have to be the he doesn't have to be the number one option, and I don't think he's used to that, and he's adjusting. Right. I think the adjustment is a big deal, adjusting to figuring out how to play with these guys. I feel like some points, like, it'll be like a two-man game, just Randall and Fournier, and then they'll be like, oh, RJ's still here. Oh, by the way, we can throw the ball to Mitch. They, like, almost forget about the other guys in the court. Sometimes. Well, that's the good thing about this season. They have solutions. It's not like they just stink and they need better players. It's like, Yes. How we just can, right. you know, play better together. We actually have depth that, like, other guy. I mean, we didn't even point out one of the biggest things from the season is that they, they've been winning a bunch of games where Randall's been playing mediocre because other guys can score. Mm-hmm. Um, I do. I would like to see them set Mitch up a little more, get him in more involved in the offense, and I'd like to see them set uh, Obi up a little more. Yeah. I feel, I feel like both those guys would be – greater weapons that'll make a big difference oh there you go look at my screen now oh wow isn't that awesome i think i would have recognized those the uh the shirt on the guy i like that the shirt is very memorable right right yeah uh, you got I the don't dress think, too like, like that was yeah they did a really good job yeah that's my old crappier uh beetlejuice outfit <laughs> I, but you said that I was like I was like you've been Beetlejuice before, yeah. Um, this one this one was better. Yeah, the new one. That, that was better. fine also, but like uh, I mean, this one was better. I was I was like I was pretty impressed actually. When I saw it on Facebook. Yeah. Did you see the Raiden one? I show me a picture. There you go. Oh, that is pretty good. Can you see? Uh, yeah. No, I could see out of that. Okay. There was uh, there was a um, uh, I was Night Owl from The Watchmen that I could not see shit. I don't think I'd recognize. I don't. I didn't never watch The Watchmen. You said that's a good movie, right? So good, yeah. I never, I never watched it. Oh, here, here's one of my favorite costumes. Let's share this. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. <laughs> um, I remember Stowe was was once a uh, Duff Man. From the Simpsons. Yeah, that's good. I was, I was like, oh, I was like, that's a good costume. Yeah, no, that's definitely good. I'm seeing if I could find uh, the Watchmen one. I, I went, I wore it, and I went to like a <laughs> bar that was just dark, and I could not see a thing all night. It was, it was terrible. But you, you wouldn't get it because you didn't even see the movie. I didn't see the Watchmen. I'm not gonna get it. Yeah, it's like the best comic movie better than uh if i didn't say the best comic movie i would say uh out of the three you've seen well i'm gonna say like a batman's a comic movie i think the batman movies the uh the the the, the second dark knight with the joker and the uh jack nicholson one hmm. i think those are the best those are my two favorite comic book movies oh here's here's the uh 
Night Owl one. I'm like blind. <laughs> it's like so Wait, tough. the guy the guy on the left that's you on the left? No, I'm on the right. That's you guys. That's from the yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know the past guy at all. But who's the person? Who's the person on the left? I have no idea. I, when I get drunk, I just take pictures with people. No, I mean, who are they supposed to be? So, There's me like trying to see in the bar. I, I don't know. I have no idea. That was yeah. That was Alex. He was a beaker. <laughs> oh, oh, that's good. Yeah, it's creative. That's not bad. Yeah, I, uh, I wouldn't have gotten your password at all. Like you're, you'd go too obscure. You're going too obscure there. Yeah, well, that was right when Watchmen came out, so it was like. Oh, okay. That that would make more sense. Yeah. That was Lauren. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. All right. Uh, okay. I got to go. Uh, yeah, Anthony says Watchmen is amazing. You wanted a Mr. Manhattan costume. Isn't that just painting your whole body blue and not wearing any clothes? Uh, Mark didn't see the movie. Did... I didn't see the movie. I, I had no idea. I I'm trying to figure out what you were talking about. I didn't realize that was a reference to the movie again. Yeah, no, there's this guy, Dr. Manhattan, and then the Watchman, and he's uh, he's a big blue naked man. Sounds awesome. <laughs> um, another brink soon? Uh, next uh, week, maybe, I guess? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll do next week. Um, I don't know about Thursday. Because so, th the Knicks are playing tomorrow, and I don't really know about Thursday. Like, you want to try to do Thursday, or do you want to just do next week? Let's do next week. I'm not sure if I, uh, I'm going to go to Long Island this week. I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm going to go after work Thursday or go Friday. Okay. So let's do it next week. Okay. All right. Talk Thanks for later. joining, everybody. Uh, Mark, I will catch you later.